All right, let's get started today. So thanks everyone for joining on a nice Tuesday afternoon here. Um, my name is Steve Simone. I'm the CEO of Bbot, and excited to uh, give you a little webinar today of uh, a little bit about Bbot, what we do as a company, and you know how we're helping restaurants succeed during these times. So let's do a little housekeeping up top here on the agenda. Um, so the first um, 15 minutes, we'll just quickly give you an introduction to Bbot as a company. Um, and then we'll spend 35 minutes or so, roughly, you know, spend a half hour showing you some product, um, talking about some of the features in the product. And then uh, lastly, we can uh, wrap up with a little bit of Q&A. So, um, just for general housekeeping though, everyone on the webinar is muted um, as, as we go through this presentation, but you can um, write your questions in the, the chat and we'll go through those uh, questions at the end. And maybe even in the, in the middle, we may take a break for a couple questions as well. So at Bebot, we think a lot about the, the changing guests. Um, you know, Really, for operators, uh, they're really trying to solve the different needs of each generation of diners out there. Um, so a lot of different guests like to dine you know, differently, uh, which makes sense, I guess, conceptually. So take someone like Sarah here. Usually, she makes reservations. Uh, she prefers to pre-order her appetizers, um, if, if possible, if the, if the restaurant supports that. And then, you know, during the meal, have server make their, have the server make recommendations uh, for the rest. Or take this group here, uh, Caitlin and her friends. She usually goes out to, you know, casual, casual spots like coffee shops in the park. Um, really enjoys a casual environment and uh, wants to control her own ordering experience uh, throughout the process. So, you know, usually likes places that um, she can self-order. Uh, Take Kenny, he prefers takeout or delivery after a long day of work. Um, he loves uh, having the ability to you know, view menu images, uh, especially when dining out to see what he's about to buy. Uh, and then lastly, someone like Andrew, who hates getting the bill at the end of the meal and you know, sometimes forgets to Venmo his friends after when they're splitting the check. Uh, so I think we all, we all have a friend like Andrew. Um, but with all of those cases, Bbot is creating a product that can help solve it. So whether it's um, you know, a situation where you wanna make a reservation and order ahead, or when you know, the guest wants to order whenever they want, or when someone like Andrew wants to have a better pay at the table solution and getting the check at the end, um, or whether we are creating beautiful digital menus and doing delivery or pickup, Bbot's creating an ordering infrastructure to help operators solve the needs of all of the changing guests out there and all of their different uh, ways they want to interact and order um, from the restaurant. And so just a little bit um, at a high level on the company, you know, Bbot is over 500 plus customers and growing. Um, we are at home in the US here. We're a New York City based company, but we also service customers internationally as well. Um, and then really across the different types of customers, you know, from Michelin star restaurants to casual breweries in Austin, Texas, uh, restaurants across the country are, are choosing Bbot, um, you know, and so we, we service a wide range of types of establishments. And again, it goes back to the changing guests need, like there's just so many different types of ordering experiences. And so we're building products that are trying to power all of those types of ordering experiences. So that's a little bit of the high level of the company and you know how we view the, the guest is changing and the operator's needs are changing. Let's just talk a little bit now about really the core of what Bbot is. Um, you know, some of the, the core product. There's a lot of different products, but was, let's go through like the core experience for people who may have not you know, experienced uh, the Bbot product yet, or this is maybe your first time experiencing our brand. So first and foremost, um, we create these branded online ordering menus that's in your brand. 
you know, not, not typically the BeBot brand. And we help you show off your brand to your guests. So guests can, you know, go to the site, which is a mobile web and place their order. So the orders then get sent to the BeBot command center in your establishment um, or multiple command centers if you have a complex workflow. Um, and if you have an integration, uh, the BeBot integration with your POS, orders will inject directly to your point of sale. Now, after that, you know, the kitchen's making it, the bartender's making the, the order. Um, once they're marked ready, it'll trigger the runner or the server and the guest will be notified on their device. And then lastly, the order is run out to the table. If you think about uh, the Caitlin in the cafe, like she, maybe she ordered another coffee that's run out to her on the table. Or in certain uh, customer types, the guests are instructed via text message to go like pick it up at the counter um, or pick it up you know, at the designated area for pickup, maybe if it's like a rooftop bar. You know, it could be over off to the side of the bar. Um, so this, this is our typical ordering flow, and it can vary across different types of establishments. So when you're, when you're in an establishment, how do you, I guess the first question you might be asking yourself is, well, how do they know where to order? Um, so this is just some pictures of our, of our customers here. Um, where we put these branded signs on the table that you know, have the instructions very cleanly laid out. So again, to showcase that it's their menu, uh, it's not bbot.menu, it's ballardpizza.menu, or in this case, uh, kanpai.menu for this beer garden in New York City. So the guests, this is how they enter step one of that previous slide. Um, you can either scan a QR code, or visit the, the branded dot menu uh, and type in your table number. This is that, that entry point. And again, it can be different for different types of establishments, whether you have tables that you can add, do an adhesive to, or whether you need something like more of a, a casual table tent um, for the guests there. Uh, so a little bit more uh, deep dive on that, that ordering experience. So take a look at uh, this customer of ours, uh, Bungalow Bar, and they are powering, you know, ordering everywhere. So on-prem pickup and delivery. So in one simple clean interface here, bungalow.menu, they have the ability for the guests to enter their table number or scan that QR code at the table. Or if I'm sitting at home and I'm on my computer, uh, maybe I'm watching TV, I can also, you know, do a delivery option as well. So we like to think really about, you know, the different ways guests are ordering, whether they're in venue or they're not in your venue, but they're at, they're at home or maybe they're at their office. And how can we create one cohesive experience for you as an operator to satisfy all three of those channels? Um, and we think that probably the best way to do that is through the mobile web. Uh, we think the mobile web is most accessible for your guests. It's all something they're, com they're comfortable with operating a website. And so if we create a very simple branded version for you, um, and then we place this across your existing channels, like your you know, Facebook page or Instagram page, uh, your, your own personal website, this can be a really great experience for your guests to stay within your properties and really order from wherever you are. So before we jump into the demo and show a little bit of the software, um, just a couple case studies here. So we launched uh, the Brooklyn Barge um, in uh, 2018. And really from looking at 2017 when he did not have BBOT to 2018 when he did, uh, he was able to see realize a 25% increase in sales. So the problem that Tommy, the owner, was trying to solve here is, as you can see in the background, uh, you can see in the background image here, it's like a lot of tables on the water with a waterfront view of Manhattan. So it can get pretty crowded. Um, and then you can see the picture of the bar and the silhouette. Uh, this would, you know, huge lines would form up at the bar. People would be waiting for, you know, upwards to 45 minutes. And 
when he encountered Bbot and met, met our team, he saw a way to simplify his entire ordering process here. So now any guest that goes to the Brooklyn Barge can, instead of waiting up at the bar or trying to flag down a server, they can simply just you know, scan a QR code at the table and order whatever they'd like. And those orders would go directly into the kitchen or to the service well at the bar. And this was able, he was able to dramatically transform his business and really um, capture a lot of the orders that his staff was missing out on, which was impacting their, their tips and their overall um, amount of money they were making. So this, this solved a huge problem from the 2017 to 28 season. And then in the 2019 season, uh, continued to uh, keep the sales up. So and every year, more and more, I think as guests get more used to ordering on their phone, he's just going to see more and more benefit. Uh, another one that we saw um, do really well uh, was McKellar Brewery. So it's a brewery um, in a baseball stadium uh, outside of City Field. And they had a really good, they had a, one of their challenges here was that taking food orders was pretty pretty tough, especially during game days. So, you know, there's a lot of fans. They're out there trying to have a good time with their friends and family. Um, they might be coming from work and they just want to get a quick bite before going into the game. But food food was always a pretty big, uh, tough solve for them and how their brewery was set up. So really, you know, what Alex, the director of ops, was looking to do was really solve the, the food problem, even more so than the drinks problem. And when they brought in Bebot, uh, to do table side ordering, you know, guests were able to place a lot more food orders than than before because before you'd have to um, go up to the bar and, and place the orders. They didn't have a ton of uh, service, and so this really really dramatically solved their issue and their ordering uh, order flow here. You did see a small increase in drink sales, but again, every restaurant we that I've encountered is has a little bit different. Um, you know, problems they're trying to solve. And you'll see that how we like to build a flexible product to really try to hone in on the specific issue that they're solving. And so we, we were able to help a lot with their food sales here. Okay, we're uh, one or two slides away from jumping into the demo, um, which I know is what everyone here has been waiting for. But just another, uh, just a quick overview for the, for the newcomers who haven't, ex who haven't seen Bebop before. So whether we do a dot menu, you know, I know I've talked a lot about the bungalow dot menu or uh, you know Ballard Pizza dot menu I showed you on the other slide, but we can also do it right off your website. So if you have a dot com, then you want to just add and hang off an ordering site, a branded ordering site. We certainly can do that for you as well. Like here's a customer of ours, Maria, and we do order dot nyc dot com. So this uh, branded version here lets it kind of keep within their same existing web property, which is great for uh, SEO and, and optimization. Um, and then for them, we are just powering only their takeout and delivery. So again, mixing and matching what you need to solve for. Like as an operator, you should be thinking, you know, am I just trying to solve for takeout and delivery right now? Especially during, you know, these times we're in right now where delivery is top of mind for many operators. Or do I need to also, you know, solve some problems inside of my venue and, you know, maybe fix how our ordering flow works at the tables in my venue? And so depending on what you're looking at and what you're trying to solve for, this experience on your front page here of your Bbot site will change, um, as you saw in the previous slide with bungalow.menu. All right, so now let's, uh, I'm going to jump into a demo and show you some of our, oops, jumped ahead of myself there. Jump into a demo and show you some of our, um, some of our uh, workflows and how our product works. And then we'll uh, jump back into the deck here and go through, you know, how we price our product, how we, what our business model is like, and how to get started with Bbot. So let me, give me one second here and I'll jump right into the demo. Okay, 
So I'm just uh, checking out right here a very simple non-branded version of the site just to give you what it, the essence of the product at its very core. So the first part here is the location code. Uh, guests are always prompted when we're talking about in-venue ordering to enter their location code. Uh, this location code is, think of it like a table number or a website URL. So it's a unique place within your venue that guests will identify where they're, where they're sitting or standing um, or where they're hanging out if it's like a bar, like high top rail or something. And so in this fictional demo here, we will pretend I'm sitting at uh, table one inside of a restaurant called Local. So I would be sitting in the restaurant and it would say, you know, go to this website, type in your table number or scan the QR code. So if I do that, I'm taken in right to the menu um, and I can go ahead and place my order, which will get sent to the kitchen or the bar. Uh, so maybe what am I feeling today? Feeling, you know, potentially that's, let's get, let's see, it's two o'clock. So I'm a little late in the day for a Bloody Mary, but I think I'm gonna go with it. Um, and then, you know, let's grab myself a, a burger. We'll do it medium rare, no pickles, you know, uh, no tomato. Actually, I like tomato. Actually, I like pickles too. I go no lettuce. And then, yeah, so then I just placed my order. It's a very simple checkout experience. Um, we support Apple Pay, Google Pay, um, and uh, Samsung Pay, as well as credit card. Tip right here to start the tab. And we can go and the order will hit the kitchen now. So from here, I'm just, I can email myself the receipt. Or I can go back to hanging out with my friends at the restaurant. Um, and then when it's accepted by the staff, this will, this will move the timeline. Uh, and then when it's at the table, this timeline will, it'll be at the table. So let's see what it takes. Let's, let's take a look at uh, what it was like on the, the operator side, because the guest side, you know, is very straightforward, super easy for the guests, which is the key. So you'll see on the, on the, the Bebop command center side is the view you're looking at now. And so this is where the orders come in. So I can tap this ticket as the operator with the, the Bbot screen here. And we'll see that the, the no frills burger, medium rare with no lettuce and fries uh, has come in and the guest wants it right now. So this wasn't a course option. This wasn't a pre-order for later. Those are all things that we can support for you though. In this case, we're just demoing the very simple, I want the order right now. Uh, scenario. So in this case, um, the ticket would also have printed if you're using ticket printers or integrated with the POS on your ticket printer. So from here, I can uh, go ahead and, and prepare it, or I could, you know, reprint the ticket if I needed to send a receipt to the guest or, or do a refund. One thing to note for those uh, watching, wondering, where's that Bloody Mary? Um, because we did place an order for the Bloody Mary too. Uh, so if you're, if you're paying attention, it's not here. That's because the, the Bloody Mary is actually sent over to the drink station. Um, so if I were to jump into the settings section here and change the device profile to the, the bar station, that, that ticket would be waiting at the bar right now. But in this case, we're just, we'll, we're in the kitchen. I'm a kitchen guy, so I'll uh, I'll prepare the burger and we'll send this out to the table. Um, so all we would have to do at this point is you know set it en route, and then click set deliver. Just one more tap and it clears the the ticket. Now let's say uh, you know the guest didn't you know like the burger or had an issue with it. You know we can go ahead and search for orders here and find that. Uh, find the burger, maybe uh, do a refund and do a partial refund. Let's say that 
you know, we're comping them back, you know, 50% of the meal. Uh, so we could, you know, do like 50% uh, and do a refund here and maybe say like, uh, we'll call it a guest request. And you can do customized refunds. From here, the guests will get a push a notification on their phone that they've been, you know, partially refunded for the burger. Uh, super easy to do. Um, in this case, I have it set where it requires a manager pin to do this because obviously anyone as an operator, you, you know, you might need the security that only certain people can give these refunds to notify the guests via the guest cell phone that they've been, you know, partially refunded or fully refunded for an item. Uh, you know, sometimes when I'm out, uh, I've seen a couple of our customers like, you know, this, this is not optimal, but let's say like you've ordered a drink and they've already started their tab on BBOT and ordered. Um, and maybe like accidentally they spilled a drink on the guests. So this is like a typical use case where you might do a, a full refund of that drink or a partial uh, refund and, and give the guest a new drink. So, you know, we fully support all these workflows for you uh, through the BBOT command center here. Uh, what about menu changes though? So this is like, what, what you're seeing here is, you know, current, future, and past orders. Um, but how do I, you know, change the menu quickly and easily for the guests? So I guess what I'll do now is I'll, I'll uh, give me a second and I'll fire up the back end of the system and show you as an operator how I can configure menu changes on the fly. One second. Okay, so here is the uh, BBOT owner panel. So what you've, just to recap what we've just seen. So we saw the, the guest ordering experience, one. Uh, we saw what it looks like when a ticket comes into the kitchen. And now we're just gonna quickly touch on the, the back of the house, uh, the back back of the house, back office and how we would change different items. So let's find that no frills burger. And maybe we need to change, maybe we have the sales tax wrong. I think that's all good actually. It's the right for New York here. Price is right, but maybe we were missing a, an option here um, for the, the options for the, that the guests could see, or maybe we don't we actually don't offer uh, mozzarella cheese on this. So I'm gonna toggle that off hit save and now that in real time, the guests um, will not have that option as a modifier choice for them to submit that order to the kitchen. So that's very simple to, you know, come in and one off edit, edit things. Uh, so that's, that's the first page of the BBOT owner panel. But let's take a little tour around the neighborhood uh, briefly here and just show you some of the, the different parts of the account. So on the left hand side is the navigation for your owner owner panel. And the home screen is where you do all of the menu management. Um, and it looks a little different if your point of sale system is integrated. If your point of sale system is integrated, the most of this data is syncing from the POS. So you wouldn't necessarily be editing uh, your BBOT menus in here. You'd be mostly editing that in your POS system as the, as the system of record for your menus. But in the cases where you're you're using the BBOT menu management, this is where you would do it. The next section here is where you could, let's say like you had a couple guests in your venue, maybe you're a hotel operator and you have a, you have a hotel rooftop bar and you had some guests, travelers come by, they ordered a couple cocktails, um, but maybe they got accidentally double charged or there was a problem with their order and they called in three days later. So this is where you would come in and you know that over the phone they're calling you you could ask for the last four of their card um, or the table they were sitting at plus the last four or if their order number, you could come in and search um, and get their receipt and refund it. We also support searching via uh, phone number as well. The next section is presentation to the guests. So this is how you change the custom messages that you have. You change your desktop and your mobile banners, your images. Um, and the messages on the checkout page. So a good example here would be, um, you know, a lot of our customers serve 
a lot of alcohol through Bbot. So they usually have a message that says like, please have a valid ID ready um, when, they, when the server walks it over to the table. This is where you can configure your custom messages and then any main messages on your menu pages. And then if you wanted to um, have a different descriptor, this is more of an advanced setting, I guess, but if you want a different descriptor on the guest card statement, you can change uh, the descriptor uh, on the guest card statement so that it you know, is more originally representative of your brand. So that's some of the stuff about presentation to the guests. Um, in the available menu hour section, there's this nice, really, really nice feature here if there's any current customers listening in on the call to view your current menu statuses. So one of the things that is a more of an unnatural uh, motion for an operator, um, think about the typical um, restaurant in the US. You know, typically there's paper menus on the table and those menus are, you know, done in-house by your design team or you have an outsourced designer and you, you make menus, you put them on the table. So the, those menu statuses are, technically always available because it's the analog world. Uh, you know, the menu's out on the table. And if there happens to be an item that you're not serving that day, when the guest tries to order it, you know, the server will just say, well, we don't have that right now. But in the digital menu world, that's a little different um, because sometimes the guest is self-ordering and you might not be naturally inclined to go check if all the digital menus are, are showing properly. So we built this nice tool for you to just check you know, you can pick any location code, like local one, and see if the menus are currently all available at that location. So it's a really quick tool as an operator to save you time, rather than having to like worry about if my if my menus are showing properly to my guests. Um, we built this tool uh, to really help our customers again, really help the managers save a ton of time when checking if all the different menus are showing. So like if my specials or my daily specials, um, if they're showing, and like let's say the menu timer was off, um, we would have a little notification here that says it's off hours, for example. So that's also done right under the status button. So in the menu settings, maybe I only wanna offer the daily or the, the beer garden food, maybe we have a special time for that. And I would come in and it, change out the allowed windows for ordering. And then that will adjust on the front end automatically to see if the guests can view the menu at this time. So with, with the Bbot menu setting and available hours section, again, to reiterate, you're able to each individual menu assess its time that it's allowed, your ordering is allowed and the allowed times um, if they if it accepts future orders, which is more of a feature for delivery or catering or pickup. Um, and then you can control each menu individually. And then once you set this, it's really all automatic for you as an operator from there, unless you change your business hours and you need to come back in here and change it again. Another uh, unique thing about Bbot, you know, we also give you more complex uh, rules for how out of stock items show or how unfulfillable items show. So you might, you might wanna market uh, certain items on your branded ordering page, but they might not necessarily be fulfillable. So you might, in that case, you would say, you know, always show items even if my kitchen can't fulfill it. And on the front end for the consumer, uh, we would market that it's available later as it, as it says here in the note. So this, this set of features right here, um, you know, I told you we would deep dive into the, the back end of the product today. This set of features are a little more advanced. Um, so our, certainly our customer support team and success team uh, can help you get the right settings for you to make sure all of your available hours and your menu settings are just how you want them as an operator. A couple other things while we're, while we're just peeking around and you know, taking a tour around the owner panel, a couple other features and things that are important are the promos and discounts where you can set uh, promo codes, you know, maybe we're doing a back to school promotion. I know one of our customers did that last year to great success. So they create a promo code that anyone who's going back to their college campus can, you know, use the promo code in order to pick up or delivery to get, you know, 25% off. Um, 
We also support like employee discounts if you wanted to implement BBOT and then give all of your employees special access to it. If do, they could do their ordering through here versus maybe ordering through the traditional point of sale. Um, it could be a nice, it's a nice feature for your, your staff to be able to place orders on a discounted menu. And then we have the employee section where you manage your managers, your servers, your bartenders, you give them all employee pins to the system. Um, and another thing here is subscribing to reports. So I can subscribe to daily, weekly, or monthly reports and get automated reports for my accounting, uh, my sales by categories, and my, uh, the tips, the tip reports as well. Um, and then my favorite personal section of the product is the section on location codes. So just to take a step back, um, if we go to the consumer product here, uh, we can really talk about what the most unique part of the system, what I would consider the most unique part of the DBOT ordering system is, is this uh, location code architecture. So in the, we started the original demo here by going to local one. Okay, so keep that in mind as we go through this part. So local one is one row of the table here. Local one is a location code in the zone of the main floor where ordering allowed is on and the fulfillment method is server delivery. If you would have ordered from local two, instead of a server running it out to you, the fulfillment method is patron pickup. So in this case, if I ordered from the table next to me, I would get a text message that says, go pick it up at the counter. So as an operator, you can create as many location codes as you want in BBOT, and you can update the fulfillment method accordingly. And we have many different fulfillment methods, whether it's server delivery, whether it's patron pickup, whether it's driver delivery, whether it's curbside pickup, you know, we can support different fulfillment types across all the location codes. So you can come in here and create new ones or edit it. To go one step further on this location-based architecture, on each location code, you can customize the guest experience. And this is really the power under the covers of what really of what BBOT has to offer operators today. So, you know, at, at local one, I might want a different checkout, post checkout message on the site than at local two the table next to it. And that could be for a number of reasons. Um, you know, maybe you have a part of your establishment where, uh, you know, guests are instructed a different instruction set. Uh, and that's very typical with our customer base, especially if you have a, a mixed use establishment where you have a rooftop, you have an outdoor seating area, you also have an indoor seating area. You might need to create a little bit different experience for each one of those areas. And this location code editor is where uh, you do that. Another example might be, you know, if you have a lounge and you have a full service area, you know, maybe in the lounge, you only want to show the appetizers and the drink menu. So you can come in and configure which menus show at which location code. And so that's another uh, nice feature of the system. Similar with stations. Um, so when I order at this location code, which station does it show up in? Um, and then lastly, my favorite thing is what if I just wanted to show just the menus at the location code and facilitate a pay only experience where they're not actually ordering through BBOT, um, but they are still getting the benefit of the menus. You know, at those location codes, we have customers who come in here and they can hide the shopping cart buttons. So now in that case, I'm just uh, viewing the digital menus that I maybe am ordering through a server and maybe I'm paying through one of BBOT's app partners that are on the BBOT app store. So we can definitely support that and we'll talk a little bit more about the integrations at the end here. Last couple of things, um, you know, you might have, your you might have uh, certain location codes where you change the required delivery info. Maybe I wanna require name and I want to require email, so I could do that. Or maybe I'm a hotel operator, and I want to require that the guests put in their room number. Um, maybe they don't need their 
their name or they need their name, but they don't need their email. We'll make the email optional, but we'll require a room number. So we can customize per location code the required info that the guest needs to be prompted for here. And then if we have any sort of like forced gratuity, maybe for hotel room service, that's kind of common, but for normal restaurants or bars, this is pretty uncommon. Um, and so that's another feature here. So this, uh, not to you know, go so far into the weeds, but I really wanted to give everyone today some back of the house under the covers view of our system. This page right here is really what I would consider to be the most powerful page for, for owners and operators managing and adjudicating their system um, for, for in-venue and out-of-venue ordering. Lastly, we offer um, all the reporting you might uh, expect from a system like this. So anything from sales by category, which is a very standard report in, in uh, ordering software like VBOT, all the way to when does the money hit my bank? Uh, so accounting and transfers. And then give me a detail line item view of every individual digital transaction that happens in my system. And you can segment this by a custom time range uh, as well. So these are, these are a little bit about our reporting. A lot of our customers use the sales by SKU. This would require you to, in the menu section, for example, edit the SKUs of all the different items uh, so that you could get a good SKU level reporting going. Um, one other nice feature for your staff, if you're, if you're thinking about, hey, how can my staff be empowered to make sure we're answering some of these digital orders? You can create up and set a text message alerting system um, and basically say, you know, for all my stations, I want to, if an order is left unopened after three minutes, I want to notify my manager. And then a lot of customers do an escalation system where if an order is, you know, if a guest orders table side and it's left unopened after 10 minutes, you know, that might alert go from the manager alert here to an owner alert. So you, we can automate a lot of your internal support to make sure that when you're not around and you're as your team, you know, running the system properly, this will help um, with the management. And then lastly, now that we're through every individual tab of the owner portal here in a, a quick overview, we have the account settings. Account settings are where you would come in and edit your delivery settings. Um, your delivery zone settings, if you're doing delivery, uh, you know, what's your radius, what's your zip codes. Um, you know, this is another, another new feature we added is uh, editing what tip shows and which ones default. So a lot of our customers default to an 80, 18 to 20% tip. Um, and this is where they would change that, what defaults for the guest. And then, if you want to integrate your point of sale system. So this next part of the owner panel, and I'm gonna steal my own thunder because we're gonna cover this when we jump back into the, the PowerPoint presentation. But with Bbot, we're trying to really create an integrated solution where you, when you get Bbot, you connect your point of sale, you connect your, uh, any sort of like your driver delivery network. In this case, I'm connected up to DoorDash Drive here. You connect your feedback and intelligence software. In the hotel world, you might connect your property management system. And then you might connect your CRM, like in this case, our partner seven rooms, or maybe you're a brewery and you wanna connect your untapped menus. And we're gonna be adding more integrations aggressively over the course of the summer. So certainly reach out to uh, hello at bbot.menu if you have integrations that you want to be added. Um, we've just hired a lot more engineers recently to continue building out more and more integrations um, to various point of sale providers, but also other best of breed applications like a Yumpingo or a Tattle. And so we're excited to uh, probably every other week now be announcing a new integration throughout the rest of the year. Um, and we're very excited to uh, continue partnering with some of the best restaurant tech companies out there to create an integrated solution. All right, I'm gonna jump back into the, the deck now. 
Um, and we'll wrap up with some pricing and then we'll go through the questions. Okay. So pretty sweet system. You're probably thinking, Steve, how much does this all cost me? And we think that we've got some really great pricing for you. Um, you know, we're not the, I would say we're not the cheapest solution out there, but uh, we are a solution that we think could be priced even higher than this because of all the functionality we offer. But I'll tell you the four main sections that we have here for how we price are the software subscription. Uh, we have a per checkout pricing, so per order. Uh, and then we have hardware and we have implementation. So to start with implementation, you can imagine uh, a single bar, you know, a sports bar down, my, down the street from me in Queens here will be a different implementation than maybe a resort in Palm Springs. So the implementation is, uh, requires a cons consultation with our team. Those projects vary. Um, obviously it's a lot different to roll out three pools, a bowling alley and a bunch of rooms in a room service than it would be to roll out um, you know, a neighborhood pub. So there's the implementation costs. Hardware, um, hardware can vary as well. This all depends on if you're point of sale integrated or not. If we're integrated with your existing POS, um, you know, you're gonna need a lot less hardware. In most cases, probably just one DBOT tablet somewhere in, on your premise. Um, but we do have customers who run it fully from the web and don't actually buy additional hardware. Um, again, this really depends on your operational flow. We recommend for anyone doing in-venue ordering, they definitely get minimum one ELO tablet because in a high volume environment, you're not gonna wanna rely just on the web-based version of our product. Um, just in our experience, we would recommend you at least one. The subscription is typically priced per zone. So if you've got one kitchen and one bar, um, that is 199 a month. Uh, as you expand and do more kitchens, um, that price goes up. We do offer uh, volume discounts there as well. And then lastly, our checkout, our, um, a major part of our business model is in the the per order pricing. So we, we charge a uh, card not present, card processing rate, and then 29 cents per order. So as you are, if you're interested in, um, you know, getting a custom quote from our sales team, uh, we definitely will, you know, you can chat with us after this, reach out to us, and we'll put together a, a custom quote for your place and um, make sure that you can see all the different uh, pricing options. This is the high level, how we do it. How do you get started with this? So Steve, pretty overwhelmed. That was a lot. You know, you showed me, you showed me uh, in venue smart ordering. You showed me delivery and pickup. You showed me all those settings in the owner panel. How do I get started with uh, implementing a new system like Bbot? So at Bbot, we take a crawl, walk, run approach, um, and you know we're really trying to get you to that first stage of soft launch. So in the soft launch, um, that's what we call the crawl. And so to lead up to the soft launch, we will help create a project plan for you, make sure we design any sort of signage or collateral you need to market this in your venue if you're doing in-venue ordering. Then we'll help you set up uh, the menu and train your management team. That will prepare us for the soft launch. Um, and we think that if you're doing off-premise direct delivery versus contactless on-premise smart ordering, the, the crawl phase looks a little different. Um, and so again, we take you through that step-by-step. Step. Once we're soft launched, uh, we spend a day or two making sure that all the kinks are worked out, if there's any, any operational flows that you're still having challenges with, and then we'll work with you to make any adjustments um, and find any other areas for improvement or expansion. And then lastly, in the run section, we'll probably deeper dive into additional integrations with you or, and or we'll uh, 
start teaching you more about some of the advanced features of VBOT and some of the advanced integrations and how to get even more out of the system than you're already getting. Uh, a couple um, a couple of things just to recap some of the stuff I showed you in the owner panel. Um, so again, with VBOT, you have full control over your order ahead functionality. So in the demo, I showed you how to do table side ordering with a server delivery mode, but we also support uh, ordering ahead for a, a later time if I'm not actually sitting at, at the table in the venue currently. Um, so that's, that's another feature that I didn't fully cover today. Uh, I did talk about how we handle alcohol. Um, one thing to note on alcohol for delivery, especially during COVID-19 right now, um, check with your state uh, laws for if you can if you can put alcohol on the BBOT platform. Um, we have good ways of, of tagging it if it is alcoholic beverage. And we actually, when we call it to the delivery providers, we, we flag that. So uh, just check with your local laws to make sure uh, you're following the rules. And then lastly, in the menu settings, um, in your owner panel, uh, we, we went through that pretty uh, deeply today. So if you have any questions, if you're an existing customer, reach out to us, or if you're a prospective new customer, um, you know, if you missed anything on that, again, feel free to reach out. A couple uh, features I, I didn't cover today that might be relevant, um, depending on who's on the call. Our, our upcoming high volume mode, which will allow you to, um, you know, swap out menus to more efficient menus uh, in times of high volume. Uh, another feature we have that we don't generally advertise is a spillover feature. So let's say you have drinks going to one service well of the bar and that, that bartender is getting backed up on too many drink orders, which is a great problem to have. We can actually create a spillover setting where you know, after 20 drinks backed up on that on that particular service well, it could spill over to the next service well and that the next one would receive orders until the, the backlog is is queued back down. Um, so that, we have a nice a lot of features for operational high volume. So for any high volume operators out there, um, you know, reach out to us and we can walk you through how we can help your place. Uh, one thing I didn't cover today was, another thing I didn't cover today was food halls and multi-vendor ordering. So a common case would be, let's say I operate a bar and maybe we have two food trucks outside who, who serve the outdoor seating. You know, we can create a setup where, you know, the guests could order drinks from my bar and then food from my food truck partners, all within one common seating area. And that's with our multi multiple vendor ordering setup. So if you have a scenario where you're, you're part of a food hall, uh, you can talk to your food hall ownership group and how we can help power that. Or if you're part of another experience like a brewery and a pizza place next door, we can help uh, join those two places together with our multi-vendor ordering features. And then lastly, for, the, um, for more of the enterprises, uh, for those larger, larger chains or groups, if you want to leverage a lot of our technology, but you want to build your own native app, um, you should reach out to us and ask us about our APIs. We offer a set of APIs that um, for the ordering infrastructure where you can build your own custom experience on top of the BBOT platform. So reach out if you're interested in, in those. All right, uh, coming to the end here and we'll take eight minutes of questions. So, um, you know, we're always building new integrations. One thing I'm really excited about is the amount of integrations our team is working on. Um, you know, coming soon, uh, we have a couple coming soon, like Opera, uh, which will be great for hotels. Um, I know the team just buttoned up a North Star integration, got great integration with Toast, which is a great point of sale. Um, and we're adding more and more every day. So please reach out to us. Um, if you have an integration you're looking for, and we can, you can talk to one of our solutions engineers as a deeper dive of what your integration needs are. All right, we'll take a pause there. My uh, throat is pretty dry now from all that talking.
Uh, we want to thank everyone for joining the webinar. I'm going to take time for some questions now. I know there was a ton of them in the chat. So I'm going to pop those open. All right. So first question here. Um, I'm going to ask my coworker and assistant Lee here which one I should start with. So Lee, what have we got? You can text me if you want. Uh, yeah, D Dom uh, asked, uh, while I'm waiting, Dom asked if you can rewatch the presentation. Uh, absolutely, we'll send that out. Now let's see a couple questions here from Akash. Is there anything in the platform for tracking from a CRM loyalty perspective? So absolutely. Um, we are, the way Bbot's approach is, Akash, the main approach here is for a platform with best of breed uh, solutions. So we're currently doing a spend go integration for one of our loyalty providers, but we're also looking at other providers as well, such as a punch or a Paytronics. So please let us know which one you're looking for. We would do an, we would actually do an integration there versus build our own loyalty out. CRM, same thing. We partner with seven rooms and Vicky, our two CRMs we use right now. We also have an API you can use if you have a proprietary data warehouse where you need to send data to, and you have your own CRM. Um, we are tracking, just so you know, Akash, all the customer data within Bbot already. So you have access to that via CSV within the platform now. So if, if a guest fills out their phone number or their email, um, you can easily go into the reporting section of Bbot and export all of the customer profile and order data um, for your own use already. We're not, Bbot itself isn't a CRM, but all of the data is accessible there for you. Uh, let's, let's uh, Kwaku asks uh, networking requirements. So we really recommend Ethernet, uh, especially if you have um, like Aloha or Micros um, and you have those printers and you want us to leverage those same printers. Uh, Ethernet is, is the most important thing. Uh, if your setup is serial, um, Bbot doesn't work as well. So highly recommend an Ethernet-based setup. If you have a serial setup and you want to convert to Bbot, we would we would give you instructions on the the requirements there to to use more of a network-based setup with network printers. Uh, options for credit card processors, Marta. Um, so right now we are the Bbot is the processor. Um, however, depending on the size of your place and if you have a pre-existing relationship, we're looking at adding more payment backends. I wouldn't say as a company that we're set on being our own processor. We want to, just like we want to partner with the best CRM, the best loyalty, we also look to add different payment backends. I know for hotels specifically, they want us to have guests be able to charge it to the room. And when we roll out that feature, that will use the hotel's processor and Bbot won't be processing the payment at all. Um, right now, the only option is uh, through Bbot, but that, that's not how it will always be in the future. Um, so the 199, uh, Leah, Leah asks, says, does the subscription include option for contactless ordering for guests? Yes. Um, depending on your place, we should be able to get you with delivery, pickup, and online ordering all for around that price um, or even even cheaper. So yeah, reach out to our team and we can uh, get a custom quote for you. That looks like Matt already answered that. Thanks, Matt. Um, all right, let's see from Joshua here. Uh, and it looks like I've got two more minutes. Um, but Joshua here, what industry uh, vertical of cloud-based POS systems do you see yourselves integrating within the near future? Yes. Um, Coming soon, we already have relationships with Revel, Upserve, Touch Bistro. So those three will be adding very soon. We already do Toast and Square now. Um, and we think that as more and more cloud point of sale companies come online, uh, we're really trying to target the ones with the most market share to be candid because that, that helps our business. So obviously I think Upserve and Revel and, and Touch Bistro all have a good amount of market share. Um, but if there's one we're missing that you want, uh, please reach out and maybe you can even make us an introduction. 
Uh, Marcus asks, do you guys have running tab capabilities? Uh, Marcus, that is uh, coming in June here. So you, the order that I showed you in the demo, um, that order effectively will start a tab. So then as you add to it over time, you'll only see one credit card charge at the end of your statement. That's a feature we're releasing in June and currently testing. So that's, that's how we think of tabs in the digital world. Uh, and the best part of that, that setup is then the server won't have to remind you to the server won't have to, uh, like run you down to close your tab in case you forget. And so we're kind of automating all of that for the guests and for the servers. Um, okay, Rev asks, what kind of business is an ideal fit for Bbot? I would say there's really two types that are really ideal. Um, and that is places that are pretty casual. Uh, any sort of a casual place that is pretty laid back atmosphere. That's a really ideal fit. Um, and then certainly right now in this given climate is any places that is looking for contactless ordering in their venue, which some places might only want that for a few months. Um, but right now we really highly support that. Uh, thanks, Stephen. I appreciate that. Um, what else do we have here? All right, I think that's pretty much, oh, wait, counting and transfers, we asked. Um, so basically a breakdown which specific transactions funds are part of. Uh, great question on that. Um, Lee, to not get too into the weeds on that, um, Lee, can you make a note to follow up with Leah on, on that question and make sure we answer that? Um, I don't actually know off the top of my head. I'm trying to think about the card transfers report. I think that that transfers report would cover it, but I don't want to misspeak and say the wrong thing. So we'll. Leah, you stumped me on the webinar and we'll follow up and after we check our reports to make sure I don't misspeak. All right, everyone, thanks for joining. I really appreciate the time and we'll see you next time for the next webinar.